Konnichiwa, and welcome to my operator guide for Hibana. This is one of a series of short videos that will help you get the most out of each operator in Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege. Hibana is a one-armor, three-speed attacking operator from the Japanese Special Assault Team, or SAT. She is a hard breacher, making use of a gadget that lacks the raw power of Thermite's exothermic charges, but makes up for that with its flexibility. Hibana was introduced in Operation Red Crow alongside Echo and the Skyscraper map. Hibana's unique gadget is the X Kairos launcher. This handheld device fires remote detonated explosives that can breach reinforced surfaces. The launcher fires up to three projectiles, each of which contains six small explosive pellets, shaped like a hibiscus flower. Interestingly, this is where Hibana gets her name, as Hibana literally translates to Fire Blossom, or less poetically, Spark. When aiming the X Kairos launcher at a surface, a red laser outline will appear, displaying the target area where the six explosive pellets will be deployed. Be aware that all operators in the game can see this outline, not just Hibana herself. This means that if a defender sees it, they will know that Hibana is vulnerable to a surprise attack. Once the desired number of pellets have been deployed, Hibana can prime all active pellets by pressing the primary gadget button. This will begin the 5 second countdown before detonating the pellets. While this is a longer detonation sequence than the 3 seconds of Thermite's exothermic charges, the X Kairos pellets are far quieter and won't attract as much attention prior to detonation. It is important to remember that once a group of 6 X Kairos pellets have been deployed, they cannot be moved or retrieved. The launcher can only fire three rounds of six pellets, and once they're gone, there is no way to reload the launcher. While Ubisoft have repeatedly made tweaks and changes to the way the game handles Hibana's gadget, it can still be inconsistent from time to time. What I mean by this is that occasionally you may notice that not all of the X Kairos pellets deploy correctly on a surface, even though you lined up the laser marked outline correctly with the wall. Or, even if they do deploy correctly, they may not detonate properly, potentially leaving part of the reinforced wall behind, which could even block your entry into the objective. While this is naturally a product of the sheer technical complexity of Hibana's gadget, it is something that I hope will be fixed permanently in the future. On the screen now is how I currently run Hibana in a typical ranked match. I will always use the Type 89 assault rifle as her primary weapon. This gun deals high damage in medium range engagements and has a fairly high rate of fire. Recoil is manageable, but these qualities are offset by the weapon only having a 20 round magazine. This makes Hibana ill suited to sustained firefights, especially at close range, where the Type 89 will be outperformed by Defender SMGs. As with almost all attacker weapons, I equip the Type 89 with an ACOG sight, a vertical grip, and a flash hider. Like Echo, Hibana also has access to the Supernova shotgun. Despite the flashy name and appearance, the supernova is unfortunately all show and no substance. This pump action shotgun has been improved by the developers over time, but especially for an attacker, I simply can't recommend it over an assault rifle, especially one as good as the Type 89. For her secondary weapon, Hibana has a choice between the P229 pistol and the Bearing 9 machine pistol. I personally tend to favour the Bearing 9, as it has a blistering rate of fire, but that is offset by erratic recoil, making it a rather inconsistent weapon at anything further than extremely close range. Those who prefer a solid semi-auto sidearm can rest assured that the P229, much like its sibling, the P226 used by the SAS, is a reliable and accurate pistol with high damage output for close range engagements. That said, with Hibana only having 20 rounds in her primary weapon, the Bearing 9 can be a useful full auto backup if you find yourself in a tight spot with no time to reload. Remember, switching to your sidearm is always faster than reloading. For secondary gadgets, Hibana has access to either flashbangs or breaching charges. Given that Hibana is usually breaching reinforced walls that lead directly into the objective, flashbangs would be better suited for aggressive pushes by her and her teammates. However, once she has opened all the essential walls and hatches, breaching charges could be used for aggressive vertical gameplay on soft floors above the objective. This choice depends on your playstyle, as well as the map you are playing on in any given match. Much like Thermite, Hibana is a hard breacher, and should be played carefully until her breaching duties have been successfully carried out. With only a limited number of breaching pellets at her disposal, you need to be selective about what you're going to breach, especially if Hibana is the only hard breacher on the team. If one of your teammates has brought Thermite, then leave him to take care of the primary breach, as this is his specialty. In this case, Hibana should be used to breach an alternative reinforced wall, or more likely, hatches. 
That knowledge is key here, as you will need to know the locations of any hatches that lead directly into the objective, so you can breach them as soon as possible and put pressure on the defenders. If Thermite is unsuccessful in his breach attempt, then Hibana may need to be used as a backup, so make sure you're communicating effectively with your team, especially with the Thermite. One advantage that Hibana has over Thermite is that she can deploy her gadget from range, and can therefore remain in relative safety while she breaches remotely. However, with her launcher deployed, she is extremely vulnerable to flanks and runouts, so make sure your position is secure before breaching, especially if you are already inside the main building. Another ability that sets Hibana apart from her American colleague is that she can create multiple smaller breaches simultaneously. For example, Hibana could choose to open a full-size breach, like Thermite, using all of her pellets in one go, or to create a smaller breach in one or two locations and open a hatch elsewhere. The key to this ability is that Hibana can deploy all of her ex Kairos projectiles before detonating them all at the same time. Alternatively, she can deploy them and detonate them one at a time, depending on the situation. A multi-location, synchronized breach may be appealing, but it takes time to set up, and if Hibana is killed after deploying the first set of ex Kairos pellets, then she will not be able to detonate them, turning the pellets into nothing more than high-tech floral wallpaper. Instead, I recommend creating a breach into the objective site using two of her ex Kairos projectiles, and once this is done, use the third to create another, smaller breach elsewhere, or open a hatch, if applicable. If you only have one projectile remaining, but no successful breach has been made, it is possible to fire the last spread of six pellets at the bottom of a reinforced wall and create a breach that an operator can crawl through. This is not an advisable breaching method, but when employed carefully, can actually allow the attackers to enter the site without being noticed while the defenders are distracted. As mentioned earlier, Hibana combines well with Thermite, as having two specialist hard breaches on your team can open up more access points to the objective, making it harder for defenders to cover every angle. Additionally, using the two hard breaches at the same time on the same set of walls makes it impossible for the bandit trick to disable both breaching devices at the same time. This can effectively guarantee you a successful breach. Likewise, Hibana can also pair well with Maverick. While not a dedicated hard breacher, Maverick can use his blowtorch to help clear entry denial and discourage defenders from employing the bandit trick. Additionally, Maverick can create smaller breaches elsewhere to keep defenders distracted while Hibana focuses on the main breach. A trusty companion to all hard breaches, Thatcher can use his EMP grenades to destroy entry denial gadgets such as Bandit's batteries, Kaid's electro claws, and mute signal disruptors. Kali can also fill this role if Thatcher is unavailable, but Kali's explosive lance makes countering the Bandit trick rather difficult. Because the lance explodes on both sides of a reinforced wall, it can easily destroy gadgets inside the objective, but it will also destroy ex Kairos pellets or exothermic charges. This means you will need to wait until the lance explodes before deploying your pellets, giving Bandit time to place another battery down. Twitch is another operator that can help Hibana out when breaching. Her shock drones can sneak into the objective and quietly take out entry denial gadgets for a stealthier approach. Hibana's ex Kairos pellets can be jammed by mute signal disruptors, just like an exothermic charge or regular breaching charge. Likewise, if the pellets come into contact with a wall that has been electrified by either Bandit or Kaid, they will be destroyed. Aside from these entry denial operators, Hibana has no other direct counters. Hibana has been an attacking team regular since her introduction in Operation Red Crow, and makes for an agile and flexible addition or alternative to Thermite. She has strong weapons, a versatile breaching gadget, and is a lot of fun to play. That concludes my operator guide, and I hope you've picked up some tips on how to use Hibana effectively. If you would like to see more videos like this one, consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel. Your support is always appreciated. Thank you very much for watching, and stay clear of the blast area.